Hi, and welcome to Gear 2. I'm David Warfel. This is a micro lecture on the equipment that we use as lighting designers. Just like a painter who has paintbrushes, a sound designer who has audio equipment, a musician who has instruments, um, in fact, we even call our lights instruments. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about those different components, about the different tools. I've divided these into four little micro lectures. The first on conventional equipment, the second on automated or intelligent lights, the third on emerging sources like LEDs and digital things, and the fourth on customs, which is a catch-all for fun things that don't fit into the other categories. Let's start off with conventional lights. First of all, the Fresnel. We talked in the Gear um, 1 lecture, or the reading if you did, did it in that format, all the different parts and components, the lenses, the lamps, uh, the reflectors, the housings of instruments. Now we're talking about all those pieces together, and the first one is the Fresnel. It's named for its lens, which is a Fresnel lens. You can see the concentric rings there. Um, the, it was designed for lighthouses, um, and this unit has a lamp inside with a spherical reflector that can be slid back and forth. It makes a nice soft spotlight, um, a round beam of light that comes out, a co round cone of light that comes out and hits the stage. It has soft edges like shown in the little diagram here. If you move the lamp and reflector closer and farther away from the lens, you have the ability to make that circle bigger or smaller. That We talk about that in terms of going to flood and going to spot. Um, it's a fairly economical fixture, um, but it has an expensive lens to manufacture. Um, but these are great for washes, general um, coverage of stage, or very soft specials when you know you don't want sharp edges, etc. Um, and they were really one of the most popular lighting instruments for probably 50 or 60 years. The ellipsoidal reflector spotlight is um, comes by a lot of different names. You'll hear them talked about source fourers, uh, source four Lico's, um, Lico lights, uh, ERS's, uh, ellipse units, ellipsoidals, six bys, etc. Basically, all brand names um, that mean ellipsoidal reflector spotlight. They have an elliptical reflector, ellipsoidal reflector that captures the light, um, and it captures more of it better than the Fresnel light, so it's a little more intense um, and there's a little more control over the light. And then most of them, the one that's pictured here um, for sure, has a double PC lens train, so a double plano convex lens train. By moving those lenses you can get the edge of the beam sharper or softer. The unique thing about an ERS or an ellipsoidal reflector spotlight that sets it apart from all the other instruments is that the ellipsoidal reflector focuses all the light to a single point inside the instrument called the gate and in that gate is an opportunity to shape the light in a way that you can't do with anything else. Uh, the most common is shutters and you can see the little shutter handles here you can pull those in and push them out and it will cut the light. We talk about cutting off the light give me a shutter cut to here, shutter cut to here when we're focusing. You can actually shape the light into a box, into a prism, into all kinds of things. Now as a lighting designer, I love this when I have a spotlight I want on someone but I don't want it to hit something else or I don't want it to hit scenery um, or I want to cut it off the edge of the stage so it doesn't spill into the audience. Shutters are amazing. And there are many theaters that use uh, almost exclusively the ellipsoidal reflector spotlight over Fresnel's, Parkhands, and all of the other instruments. Now the ellipsoidal reflector spotlight is more expensive. It's probably the most expensive of the conventional lighting instruments uh, with exception of a follow spot. Um, but it's very, very versatile. You can get soft, you can get sharp, you can get shutters, you can also drop gobos into that gate and shape the light even more. Um, to get tree leaves, uh, sunrises, clouds, all kinds of different things. So it's not uncommon for these lights to be the workhorse of a conventional theater, and certainly in most of the theaters today, uh, the ellipsoidal reflector spotlight is um, the primary instrument of choice. 
it has an ability over the Fresnel to be able to project further as well. You'll often hear about them listed in terms of degrees nowadays, so like a Source 426 or a Source 410 degree or a Source 450 degree. And essentially that means how far does the light spread out as it comes out from the light. Does it spread out a little bit as a 5 degree or a lot as a 50 degree? Um, and that also allows you to get lights very far away from the stage, out in front of house positions, and still push that light to the stage. So it's a, um, uh, a great fixture to have. The Source 4 version of this um, simply has a different lamp and a different reflector that makes the optics in it better. Think about um, uh, cameras from 10 years ago or digital cameras from 10 years ago and digital cameras from today. Um, the optic improvement helps get better pictures. The optic improvement of a Source 4 over what you see here um, helps it uh, um, get more light to the stage, be a more efficient fixture, and get um, less heat onto the stage as well. Uh, it uses the dichroic glass reflector. Next up is the PAR CAN. Um, PAR stands for Parabolic Illuminized Reflector. And can is exactly that. These started out as coffee cans with a PAR lamp. Um, the PAR lamp is enclosed. It has a reflector. It has a lamp inside, a halogen lamp inside, and it has a glass lens all connected. And you take that lamp out and put another lamp in if you want it to spread out differently. So you'll have a medium flood lamp. You take that out. And once you take the lamp out, it really is just a metal can. That's it with a plug. Um, and they, like I said, they used coffee cans for these originally. These are very cheap and very bright. And they were how rock and roll concerts in the 80s did all of their lighting. Um, because you could afford a lot of them, that meant you could afford one red one, one green one, one blue one, put them up on stage and get all kinds of different colors. Um, park hands are still used in conventional theater a lot, um, a fair amount, because they have a good punch or um, a nice um, strong bright beam uh, and they are very economical. Um, you won't see them as much as the ellipsoidal reflector spotlight uh, because you can't control them very much without changing the lamp. It makes an oval shaped beam because of the way the filament and um, lens is arranged on the inside. The oval shaped beam you can't do anything with. You can't make it smaller or bigger or shutter cut. The only thing you can do is rotate it to make that beam stretch horizontally or vertically um, and that's the, the par can. Um, they come in different sizes, and they're listed by their size. So a par 56 is 56 eighths of an inch across. I'm not sure why they did that, but the number in a lamp is always the eighth of an inch across, unless it's European, and then it's millimeters. So a par 56 is smaller than a par 64, but a par 16 is really small. It's 16 eighths of an inch or two inches across. We call those birdies. Um, it's a golf term for one under par. Um, uh, but they come in all different sizes and different wattages and different beam spreads as well. You can get narrow spot, very narrow spot, um, medium flood, wide flood, and a, and a variety of other options for this kind of light. This is the Source 4 PAR, um, which is essentially the same idea, only they've separated the lens, the reflector, and the lamp. Um, so that you just have to change the lamp um, if it burns out, and so that you can change the reflector, or sorry, the lens only um, to get different beam spreads. Uh, it's just a modern variation that uses the same lamp as the source for ellipsoidal reflector spotlight, um, which is more efficient, um, brighter punch. So this is the sort of modern equivalent of that. I should mention that the Fresnel the ellipsoidal and the parkan all have LED replacements, and we'll look at those in a minute uh, uh, in, the, in one of the next micro lectures um, that essentially replace the halogen source with an LED source. Oftentimes there's a change in the optical train as well. The lenses and reflectors are different for LEDs. Um, so right now these are all just halogen conventional equipment. The strip light. Um, is essentially like a bunch of par cans uh, welded together. And so you get um, a bunch of spots that will blend together and make a, a linear wash of light. Um, these are also called border lights. Um, they were used over stage. Um, you could put a bunch of them over stage and cover and wash the whole stage with plenty of light. And kind of in the beginning of theater, 
uh, theatrical lighting. The idea was just to replace the candles and gaslight that were used. So we just, uh, and candles and gaslight were put in rows across the stage. So they made an electrical version of the same thing and put them in rows across the stage and lit up the whole stage. Kind of looks like a footlight as well. Um, and different variations of strip lights were used as footlights. Um, they do get some modern use um, to light small backdrops sometimes, um, to put general washes on stage um, for audience blinders, which is where you just want light to, sh to shine at the audience. Um, but they're not nearly as uh, in use as, as the other uh, equipment. There's a variation on this that's called the psych light. And the difference in a psych light is it's also made to, you know, to light a backdrop or a cyclorama. Um, much like a strip light, but instead of using a PAR lamp with a regular reflector, it has a built-in reflector that is asymmetrical, meaning it doesn't push in even directions. It pushes more out the top. So if you look at the little rectangle of light there, um, a psych light will push more light further up the psych, allowing you to more evenly illuminate the psych. Um, this particular one here is divided into six cells, and the strip light before is the same way. You'll see that you can actually, they're, they're hooked together um, and you can put gels in them to get different colors onto the psych um, and cha change that. Then you can add colors together to blend and you can get all kinds of colors on the psych. Uh, final, the final conventional instrument is the follow spot. Um, there are many, many, many different kinds of follow spots and essentially it's an ellipsoidal reflector spotlight on a stick. Um, with some handles and a few other accessories to make it uh, more conducive to following an actor. It has a human operator. Uh, it has often of, often they have a color boom. The little levers on top um, put different colors into the um, actually the levers on the side of this one put different colors in so you can change the color. And the levers on the top have an iris which makes the beam smaller or bigger, um, and shutters which shutter it off. Um, and you can move this follow spot around. Of course, the idea is to be able to follow an actor, uh, performer, etc., while they're moving on stage. They come in all different shapes and sizes as well, but essentially um, are ellipsoidal reflector spotlights on a stick. Um, and in fact, many theaters um, who, uh, some very small theaters or, or theaters that can't afford follow spots, which are very expensive, um, will use a Source 4 ellipsoidal reflector spotlight buy accessory handles for it, put it on a stick, and make it into a follow spot. That's conventional equipment. Next up will be automated equipment.